we are asked to solve the quadratic inequality and state the solution using inequalities, interval notation, and a graph. Let's review the steps for solving a quadratic inequality. Step one is to find the zeros of the related quadratic equation. These zeros are called the critical numbers. Step two, we plot these numbers on the number line as open or closed points based upon the original inequality symbol. Step three, choose a test value in each interval to see if the interval satisfies the inequality or not. If the test value produces a true statement, the entire interval is true. If the interval produces a false statement, the entire interval is false. And then finally, step four, we clearly graph the solution and state the solution using interval notation or inequalities. So going back to our example, we first solve the related equation, which is x squared minus x minus 30 equals zero. Let's solve by factoring. The left side factors into two binomial factors. First term is x squared, which is equal to x times x. So we have an x in the first position of the first binomial and the second binomial. And we can think of minus x as minus one x. And therefore the second terms of the binomial factors will be the factors of negative 30 that add to negative one. And because negative six times positive five is equal to negative 30, and negative six plus five is equal to negative one. The two factors we need are negative six and positive five, and therefore one binomial factor is x minus six, and the other is x plus five. The product on the left is equal to zero when x minus six is equal to zero, or when x plus five is equal to zero. Solving for x here, we add six to both sides, giving us x equals six, or solving for x here, we subtract five on both sides, giving us x equals negative five. So these are the values of x that make the quadratic expression on the left equal to zero. We want the x values that make the expression less than zero, and therefore six and negative five are not going to be part of the solution, and therefore we plot these on the number line as open points. Whenever the inequality symbol is less than or greater than, we will always plot these zeros as open points. If the inequality symbol is less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, we would plot the zeros as closed points. So we plot negative five and positive six as open points. And now we pick a test value in each subinterval to see if it satisfies the original inequality. So for the interval on the left, let's test x equals negative six. For the interval in the middle, let's test x equals zero. And for the interval on the right, let's test x equals seven. And now we sub these values back into the original inequality to see if it produces a true or false statement. When x equals negative six, we have the square of negative six minus negative six minus 30 less than zero. Simplifying the square of negative six is positive 36. Minus negative six is equivalent to plus six. And then we have minus 30 less than zero. 36 plus six minus 30 is equal to positive 12. 12 less than zero is false. And therefore the interval to the left of negative five will also be false. And now we test the interval in the middle by using the test value of x equals zero. Substituting zero for x, we have the square of zero minus zero minus 30 less than zero. Simplifying, we have negative 30 less than zero, which is true, and therefore the interval from negative five to six is also true. And now we test the interval to the right using x equals seven. Substituting seven for x, we have the square of seven minus seven minus 30 less than zero, which gives us 49 minus seven minus 30 less than zero. The left side simplifies the positive 12. 12 less than zero is false, and therefore the interval to the right is also false. So the solution is the interval that is true, which is the open interval from negative five to positive six, not including the endpoints. So this is the graph of our solution. And now let's state the solution as an inequality, as well as using interval notation. To state the solution as an inequality, we use a compound inequality we can state that x is less than six and greater than negative five using this notation, or we can also state x is greater than negative five and x is less than six. 
for interval notation, the interval is from negative five to six. Because the endpoints are not included, we use a random parenthesis to the left of negative five and to the right of positive six. If the endpoints were included, we would use square brackets, not parentheses. And before we go, let's also check our solution graphically. To check the solution graphically, we graph the function f of x equals x squared minus x minus 30. And because we are trying to determine where the expression is less than zero, we determine for which x values the graph is below the x-axis. The function values are negative below the x-axis, they are positive above the x-axis, and the function values are zero on the x-axis. Let's highlight the part of the graph that is below the x-axis, which is this part here, where all the function values are negative. And because we don't include the points where the function value is zero, we would not include the x-intercept here or here. And the solution is a set of x values for which the function is below the x-axis, and therefore the solution is from negative five to positive six, not including the endpoints. So this graph does verify our solution is correct. I hope you found this helpful.